BMW i3 is delivered with lifetime transmission fluid and there's no oil change in the maintenance schedule. Like many others I felt I should change it anyway and this is a chronicle of that process. Before opening the engine compartment the high voltage system needs to be disabled. I found instructions on how to do this on the internet. The switch is different in later models. To remove the boot floor we need a Torx T25 screwdriver. I've removed some of these screws already. You remove the back and side screws and then just loosen the ones at the front. None of what I'm showing here is new information. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, but I've added a few useful details. Removing these clips holding the sound insulation on the side of the transmission is the most difficult part of the whole endeavour. They're evil, horrible things which grip harder when you try to pull them off. I found that slipping a sharp instrument under each tang allowed the tangs to be separated and eased off their studs. BMW probably has a very simple and very expensive special tool to accomplish this. You've probably noticed there's plenty of space in this engine compartment. I probably wouldn't have tried this if I had a Rex. There are more tubes and wires in the way and a different bracket and vent plug, but there's a hole in that bracket in just the right place. Once the clips are freed, the sound insulator can be removed to the right mm -hmm. out of the way. You can see there's no filling port and plug on this transmission. This i3 has a build date of February 2015. Apparently BMW deleted the filling port just before this car was built. The drain plug takes an 8mm hex drive. It has a magnet to collect debris. I want it to be as gentle as possible to avoid dislodging any of the debris, but I'm not sure whether this is necessary or whether it makes any difference. The yoke container was big enough to collect all of the fluid. There's only half a litre in there. The fluid looks clean, but we'll see it in its original container later on. This is a good time to go and have a cup of tea. I used a new washer. BMW supplies these with a new drain plug included. The torque specification is 35 Newton meters. I've heard some complaints about the vent plug being difficult to remove. I can't show the removal technique because it's a tight space that needs both hands and my hands are too fat. The plug needs to be squeezed from both sides then lifted off. It's much like the child proof lids on bottles of hazardous fluid. You can see that squeezing the plug causes it to widen perpendicularly separating the locking tabs. I measured the accessible parts of the vent. The external diameter is 19 millimeters, the internal diameter 14 millimeters. There's a deeper connection which I couldn't measure but looks to be about 8 millimeters. Once the plug is removed, tubing can be connected to the vent. I'm using vinyl tube, 19 millimeters internal diameter. For those few who still cling to the British Imperial system, at three quarters of an inch. I'm using BMW G1 axle oil. It was specified at least until 2018, but I think BMW now specifies BMW G3 oil. G1 is 75W85. G3 is 70W80. Using this viscous oil might save 5 joules per metre, at a guess. Yes, I could have used a funnel, but I was careful, and only just careful enough, as you can see. In the i3, every so often you'll find a design element 
which looks as though it was put there by an engineer to spite the administrators. If an administrator told you to delete the filling plug but you wanted a way to change your transmission fluid anyway, you could put a filling nipple on top of the transmission, call it a vent and the administrators would be none the wiser. Removing the pipe, checking that the vent is clean and that there were no leaks of fluid where they couldn't be seen. The vent plug then clicks into position. Yeah, good doggy. When replacing the boot floor, the screws should be tightened essentially finger tight. Apparently, they strip out easily. Let's check the fluid volume and condition. What well, looks like lumps in the bottom of my yoga container is just aggregates of microparticles. I couldn't feel any gritty components. Comparing the volume of what came out versus what I put in, it looks about the same. The weight is 466 grams for both, including the container. Checking the fluid coating the container. There's two grams left. Off screen I pushed a rag through the vinyl tube and it gained a gram. So there is three grams difference between what came out and what I put in. Looking at the drain plug, the spiky appearance of the crud on the magnet must have something to do with the magnetic flux lines. It's all just mush without any palpable particles. Once again, this is not a how-to guide. The authorised method involves using the filling port on early models and removing a drive shaft on later models.